When a group of nine young people took a canyoning class at a well-respected outdoor center in New Zealand, nobody knew that the thrilling adventure they had booked would turn out tragically and cost the lives of at least seven of them. This is the true tragedy of the Mangatapopo Canyon. In 2008, a group of 11 people, comprising nine students, all 16 years old, and two teachers of 29 years old, planned to embark on a canyoning session spanning approximately 200 meters in the Mangatapopo Canyon. The activity involved traversing the stream, then returning to the starting point. This segment of the canyon was considered a moderate to difficult level course due to its technical features and environmental conditions. With narrow passages, steep rocky sections, water crossings, and other obstacles, it required a certain level of canyoning expertise to navigate safely. Participants typically needed prior experience or training to undertake courses of this difficulty. As per the procedure of the activity center, staff checked the weather before commencing activities in the canyon for the day. The local weather agency provided general forecasts along with a more specific weather map, which was updated as needed throughout the day. At 8 a.m., a staff member reviewed the forecast and noted the possibility of rain during the activity time frame. Despite a past incident in 1976 where a girl on a similar trip was swept away and drowned, the center did not require their employees to check the weather map before conducting sessions in the canyon. The expectation at the center was that groups would do activities rain or shine, so despite the rain, the event proceeded as planned and everybody prepared for the day ahead. Mistake number one. The weather map displayed an alert for heavy rain in that part of the canyon, but this information was ignored by the two teachers. The water in the gorge of the canyon was very cold and chest deep in some places. Not long after the beginning, teachers noticed that some of the students were struggling with the swimming part. One student even became frightened, began to cry, and wanted to go back to safety. Adding to that, nobody knew that one of the kids needed medical assistance as he had a physical impairment that was not listed on his medical form. As the group progressed, the current became stronger and the level of difficulty increased. At approximately the turnaround point, one of the students was nearly swept away. Mistake number two. The medical form in the registration didn't ask for the swimming ability of participants. Even though required by the center policy, it wasn't checked at any point despite the level of difficulty of the expedition. Not far from the turnaround point, there was a deep area of the stream that needed to be crossed. To do so, students had to jump into the water and catch the hand of someone who had already crossed. As forecasted, it had been raining throughout the day, at times heavily. Subtly, the water level was continuously rising, turning the river brown and muddy and making travel more and more difficult. Without the teacher's knowledge, the group passed through a high water escape area, as indicated on a map of the gorge with emergency exits marked. Mistake number three. However, this map had never been provided to the teachers, and worse, none of the teachers on that day were aware of the existence of such exits. At the turnaround point, the group paused and began to notice changes in the water level of the gorge. The two teachers quickly realized the need to reach safety as soon as possible. Their only option seemed to be to backtrack to the starting point 200 meters upstream. Unaware of the existence of emergency escapes, they continued downstream, passing the emergency escape for a second time. This mistake potentially sealed the fate of a significant portion of the group. This contradicted the center's policy as the instructors had not received proper training for navigating the gorge. Mistake number four. They should have been familiarized with all emergency exits. Although they had undergone a competency-based assessment, it became evident that their knowledge was incomplete for safely conducting this trip. Approximately 135 meters further downstream, fatigue set in, and the group decided to take a break on a ledge, deeming it a safe spot to wait for the flood to pass. 
While the center's crisis management plan identified floods as a threat, it didn't offer specific strategies to address such situations to the staff on the ground or at the center. In the center's office, program managers observed rising water levels in the gorge, but were uncertain about the appropriate course of action. Mistake number five. They failed to initiate the crisis management plan due to a lack of training. In the meantime, the water continued to rise, gradually creeping over the ledge. Initially, it covered the students' ankles, but within minutes, it surged up to their knees. The ledge was slippery, and students had to hold on to the rock face to avoid being swept. Time was running out, and teachers needed a plan if they didn't want everybody drowned by the strong current. The instructors were unsure of what to do. One of them had not been formally assigned a mentor who could provide safety guidance, as outlined in the center's policy to ensure their employees were prepared for all eventualities. In fact, she had been allowed to lead the gorge trip without having read and signed the Risk Analysis and Management System document, which contained valuable information on what to do in such situations. Consequently, she had no way of knowing if the water would continue to rise and what steps to take to ensure the safety of the nine children with her. The other instructor attempted to radio for help but encountered difficulties as the radio was turned off, disassembled, and double-bagged, making communication to or from the group very challenging. It took a moment to make the radio operational in these rough conditions, and when they were able to turn it on, the canyon walls blocked the calls. Mistake number six. Given that this gorge was a common spot for this center, they could have addressed the problem by installing a radio repeater to ensure communication when needed. However, no such device was installed. The students grew increasingly cold and uncomfortable. The instructors now faced an extraordinarily difficult situation and needed to act quickly as the situation worsened. The water had transformed into a roaring, raging torrent. The instructor outlined her escape plan. She would leap into the river, swim downstream to safety, and every five minutes, group members would follow. From the shore, she would toss them a safety line with her throw bag and pull them to safety. Due to the overwhelming noise of the water, she communicated her plan to nearby students and attempted to lip-read as the teacher conveyed it to the others farther along the ledge. Recognizing that some students lacked confidence in the water, the instructor tethered them to stronger swimmers using webbing and carabiners, including herself. With courage, the instructor plunged into the water, navigating through the powerful current and reaching shore just above a dam. Soon after, a student followed suit but was swept over the dam on the far side of the stream beyond the instructor's reach. He hit a log and rocks, lost his helmet, both boots, and a sock, but he was able to get to shore. The instructor told the student in panic to get her radio and call the center for help, which he did. Mistake number seven. But radio procedures regarding which channels to use were unclear to rescuers, leading to confusion and inefficient communications. And rescue drills practicing rescuing groups in the gorge had not been conducted. Although program managers made sincere efforts to help, they did not effectively implement the crisis management plan at any point. Meanwhile, another student floated by calling for help. Like the previous one, he was unable to navigate the strong current successfully and ended up on the far side of the stream. Unfortunately, he was too far away for the teacher to reach, and he was swept over the dam. Later, the student's body was found downstream. Since only one radio was present with the group, communication between the teachers on the ground and the teacher on the ledge was impossible. This hindered the ability to give crucial instructions, such as how to swim downstream to reach the throw bag. Moreover, the noise from the raging current made verbal communication extremely difficult. Furthermore, having only one instructor leading a trip in challenging terrain compounded the problem. They were unable to effectively guide the students on how to navigate the river in such conditions. This lack of adequate supervision had also been an issue in the previous incident in 1976. As the second student tried to swim downstream to safety, the others followed his lead, desperately trying to grab the rescue bag thrown by their teacher. 
but amidst the swirling currents and deafening roar of the water, their efforts were in vain. In just five minutes, the situation went from serious to catastrophic. One by one, the students struggled against the relentless force of the river, their panicked cries drowned out by the thunderous rush of water. Frantically attempting to grasp the rope thrown by their instructor, they battled the swirling currents, their strength waning with each passing moment. Despite their brave efforts, the students found themselves overwhelmed by nature's sheer power, their bodies swept away by the unforgiving torrent. As they were mercilessly carried downstream, the once hopeful expedition descended into a nightmare of despair and tragedy. Within five minutes, six students and one of their teachers drowned. Bodies of two students were recovered more than two kilometers downstream. After the tragedy, an external safety audit was conducted on the day of the incident. Surprisingly, despite the fatalities and numerous mistakes that led to it, the center passed its safety audit and continues to operate to this day. This was the true tragedy of the Mangatapopo Canyon.